The rising price of basic foods is worsening South Africa's food security crisis, which could increase social instability and spark a repeat of the devastating July unrest. Food Forward South Africa, an organization addressing hunger in poor communities, says per month 13 million people in the country are experiencing food insecurity. So we are in a food security crisis in South Africa and uh, we are finding people presenting with malnutrition in the Eastern Cape earlier on this year, 12 children died of starvation. And we will find more and more incidences like that across the country starting to, 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 to manifest. Um, and we are seeing an increase in, in, in crime, opportunistic crime, but also well-organized crime as a result. South African consumer inflation surged to a 13-year high last month mainly driven by rising transport and food prices. The Peter Maritzburg Economic Justice and Dignities Group's latest household affordability index shows that the average household basic food costs approximately 270 US dollars per month. These basic foods are cooking oil, maize meal and cake flour. So when we compare our basket this year to last year and we look at some of the items in our food basket, then we would see that staples, for instance, maize meal has increased by about 11%. Flour has increased by something like 24%. On the ground, consumers are saying that their pockets cannot sustain their livelihoods. Food prices have skyrocketed so much that we can't keep up. You send your children to the shop and they come back informing you that the store owners are charging more. It's really shocking how food has gone up. What has made it worse is the COVID-19 pandemic. People lost their jobs during this period. This current economic climate is the reason one of the July unrest in Durban. We need to go back to planting our own food. South Africa's food security crisis is worsened by the country's high unemployment and stagnation in the growth of the economy. One day, one day in Johannesburg, South Africa, African News. Lesotho has said it will hold its general election on October 7 in the latest round of polling in the landlocked southern African country. The date was contained in a notice dated 19th July and signed by the head of the country's electoral commission, Mpai Fele Makutu, but published on Wednesday. The mountainous kingdom of 2 million people entirely surrounded by South Africa, Lesotho has suffered repeated bouts of instability and army interference in politics. The elections were announced after King Lesie III dissolved parliament in line with procedures to prepare for new polls. The outgoing parliament failed, however, to pass a law on electoral reform aimed at ending political volatility. The proposed changes will have prohibited lawmakers from switching party allegiance within the first three years of their tenure. Lawmakers elected a prime minister to head government and the premier usually comes from the party with the majority in a 120-seat parliament. The proposed reforms will have also made the king commander of the armed forces, a move aimed at preventing political leaders from meddling in the security services. Between 2017 and 2012, Lesotho held three elections that resulted in fractious coalition and turbulence. In Lupembe village of the Karunga district in northern Malawi, people don't just die. Someone kills them. While Inayamwangu Piri shudders each time he recalls how he survived death by a mob which accused him of bewitching his cousin to death. But Mwangu Piri's brother and old parents didn't make it. The mob killed them. When I escaped, I got a phone call informing me that my brother had been killed and that the killers were after me. At that time, my parents hadn't been killed yet. I kept running and reached the police roadblock where I got a lift to Mlala. After I got out of the car, some members of the mob were already there and threatened to kill me. Dozens of people have lost their lives or property in witchcraft slayings that have shocked the southern African country. All it takes is one unverified rumor and the mob pounces. Everything happens so fast that law enforcement barely has a chance to respond.
It was in December 2019 when my brother's son fell ill and died. When the boy died, some people claimed that he had been bewitched, and while we were preparing for burial, a group of people came saying they wanted to deal with the people who had bewitched the boy. Accusing someone of witchcraft in Malawi is a crime. A special commission has proposed that the country's laws are amended to acknowledge the existence of sorcery. There are many factors uh, that are driving these uh, kind of attacks against uh, people accused of witchcraft in general, uh, especially the elderly. Um, one of the reasons is um, our legal framework. I think um, uh, we are still using an odd piece of legislation, which is the Witchcraft Act of 1911, which has not uh, really you know, addressed uh, some of the emerging issues um, around witchcraft. Since 2019, mobs have killed at least 75 people suspected of dark magic. According to account by the Center for Human Rights and Rehabilitation, a local non-government organization. The Senegalese striker Sadio Mane has been awarded the best African player of the year. On the women's category went to Nigerian Aziza Ashwala, who scooped the best player. Mane becomes the first Bayern Munich star to be voted African player of the year. Mane was a key figure in the Senegal team that defeated Salah captain Egypt in the 2021-2022 African Cup of Nations final and in a 2022 World Cup playoff. Both the African title decider in Cameroon and Qatar eliminator in Senegal were won by Teranga Lions after penalty shootouts. The two Senegalese success have made Mane favorite to win a second straight player of the year award after 2019. The following two editions were cancelled due to the coronavirus pandemic. Meanwhile, Pep Usman Sak was awarded for the best goal of the year from Simba United, Tanzania. The best women coach of the year was Desire Elise from South Africa, Banyana Banyana. It was obvious after an exceptional season that Sadio Mane was going to win the African Player of the Year award, his second in history. Sadio Mane is more of a national symbol for the Senegalese whom he led to their first Africa Cup of Nations crown in February. After being named African Player of the Year, most of the Senegalese we met retain only positive reviews for their compatriot. It is really deserved and there's lots more to come because he's a very nice kid modest and a great footballer because when you see Sadio Mane who comes from Bambali who braved all the obstacles to become a great player he deserves it. He often faced a lot of criticism but he always kept hope. He's worked really hard and we've seen how important he's been in the Liverpool system. He's a guy that you can throw to the left, to the right, in the middle. You have to have qualities to be able to do all that work. So I think he's a great player and he deserves it. He's someone who fully deserves the golden ball for winning the Nations Cup. I think that given the results he's had this year, he deserves it. We also have a nationalistic feeling because Sadio Mane is a Senegalese and remains our national pride. He deserves it. With this second Golden Ball award, Sadio Mane joins El Hadji Diouf, the Senegalese soccer star of the 2000s, in achieving the feat. The child of Bambali is more than ever the best player in the history of Senegalese football. Je suis Wahani Johnson Sambou, correspondant au Sénégal pour Africa News.